and you. And I'll have a treat to do it. Go the other way. Okay. George. <coughs> Fine. How are you? A view. Well, historically, it's anything between 35 and 40, usually. Um, it, it's difficult to, to pitch it, really. I think last year I thought it'd probably take less than it actually did in the end. So it's, it's, not, it's not an exact science. It's stats over a, a period of seasons will give you a trend and, and give you a ballpark figure, but it's... It's difficult to say. I mean, uh, all the teams at the bottom, the bottom three, have, have started to pick up points. Um, the ones just above have. So, uh, difficult to say, really. Thank you. That was a good, sensible answer. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, Philip Walshide. Walshide? Walshide, Walshide. I, I would suggest. Thank you. Mm. Um, online with a view to a permanent. Um, what, where do you see him? Do you see him going straight into the side? Do you see he, he's ready to compete straight away? Or you've got quite a, quite a number of centre back options now. Yeah, well, we pursued it because there was uh, an opportunity to, to, to do it. Obviously, some, sometimes um, when you get wind of deals you feel are a good opportunity, then sometimes you, you have to take them. Maybe timing um, isn't what we. we we anticipated, uh, but sometimes there's deals that if, if you don't do them now, uh, you lose the opportunity, and that was the case. Um, if we'd have waited till the summer, the opportunity to, to bring Philip in w wouldn't have been there for us. So uh, we had to move quickly, and we're pleased we, we have done. He's he's come in, he's he's in good shape. Um, when he had a couple of weeks off in that time, he obviously was aware of our interests, so he's, he's kept himself up to speed. Last game he played was the last game before they went to break against Bayern Munich. So um, he's up to speed in my view. And in terms of having seen him in training this week, he's only had two sessions, obviously, but uh, like I said he's, he looks in good shape. So uh, he's an option. That's all I say. I mean, it's, uh, it's a big decision to throw him in, in at the deep end against a team of the quality of, of Arsenal. But uh, certainly he's, he's an option for him. With the options you've got at centre back, does that mean you might be prepared to let one leave? I'm thinking potentially Robert Hoof as well. Uh, well, we, we we might look at a number of things, but um, we have to be careful. We don't allow ourselves to be um, a little bit thin on the on the on the ground in terms of of bodies. Uh, at the moment, we're not too bad, but over Christmas we we were really stretched, and uh, and, and I don't want to be in a situation where that we're we're losing players, key players in similar positions and that, and that obviously you can't cover for every eventuality if you have two or three injuries in the, in the same position in the team then uh, you probably haven't got the depth to, to cover that. Um, at the moment Mark Moniesa has, hasn't trained, well he's trained uh, today for the first time this week uh, so he's had problems with his groins. Um, uh, Mark Wilson um, has a issue with his knee that we're managing okay but um, we've got to be mindful of that so we have to be careful if we if we feel it makes sense for for guys to, to go out maybe get a few games maybe Robert comes Robert Huth comes under that bracket uh, within that bracket then then we'll have a look at it but it's it's important that we we remain strong rather than uh, um, same people going go out because we think we've got strength in numbers that can change very quickly as we know um, there was a, a few raised eyebrows when your assistant said that you're in for Shakiri mm. in the week, um, and, and I don't mean any disrespect by that, but you, you, there were some huge clubs that have been chasing. He's now gone to Inter Milan on loan. Does that give an idea of the ambition of you and this football club of, of what you're looking for in the transfer market? Is that the sort of standard you're talking about? We'll we'll continue to to look at the market and see what's available, and and if we see good players that we can realistically get close to which was certainly the case um, 
with with the, the player you're mentioning, then then we'll try and pursue it. And if it if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. There's there's plenty of targets in the window that you you, you hope to to get over the line, but you know that the reality is is that you're highly unlikely to to get every every single one of them. So he was one that's slipped by the wayside, but certainly we were very much in the frame. Um, I think if you read what his, his agent, his brother said, um, they were very impressed with what we had to say and the offer that we, and what we can offer, uh, what we put to it. So um, <coughs> it wasn't dismissed. I think maybe that's what we take from it, is that we can we can get in, in the room with these people now, with top quality players, and, and they'll listen to what we say. Maybe that hasn't been the case in the past. Obviously, Mamadou has gone off to the mm. Cup of Nations. Does that mean you'd like to get a striker in quickly to help with the cover for that? Or were you looking for a striker anyway? Uh, it's, it's one of those. We, we, we'll look at what's out there. And um, yeah, we've, it's fair to say, we, we understood that Mam was, wasn't going to be available. But uh, um, if there's something that makes sense to us, so we'll pursue it. Um, but obviously, he's going to be away for minimum three weeks, I would think. Uh, they may get knocked out, and we get him back sooner. So it's to go into the market and get somebody just for cover of the three three weeks, maybe it's uh, maybe not something we'd look at. But but if there's something that came on the radar that obviously long term we, we felt was was something that could enhance the group, then then we'll do it. Cracking form you're in, um, seven points from nine in the Premier League. I, I know mm. you think that probably should have been nine out of nine with the Manchester United game. Um, but one defeat in seven in all competitions as well. It's starting to click. Do you think there's a big second half of the season for Stoke City? I, th I think we've just come through a really tough period. One, one that at the beginning of the season I think we were all a little bit concerned about because we, we looked at the fixtures and um, we were facing, obviously we've got Arsenal at the weekend, but we were facing Arsenal twice, Man United twice, Chelsea, Everton away, Tottenham as well. So big games in close succession, one after another. Um, and we looked at that period and I thought, goodness me, we, we need to get uh, through that that period of games in, in decent shape. And thankfully that's that's where we find ourselves, and it's been a huge <coughs> effort. Uh, we, we have lost players to injury, and we've had to cope with that. But we're in good shape. We're going into the second half of the season now. We've got players coming back as well, so um, we're really happy where we are at the moment. And finally, sorry, I'm going on a bit, but Arsenal, there's, there's, there's been so much history, so much bad blood that predates you <coughs> with this fixture. Do you expect it to be hostile when you go to the Emirates? And can you explain that that hostility? We have to discuss this every every time we, we go up against Arsenal. And we're, we're certainly sick of it. I think Arsenal undoubtedly are. So I mean, I think everybody should should move on. We we, we enjoyed our performance against Arsenal last time out. We played really well. Um, in terms of of our performance, the football we played was was exceptional, and uh, and it wasn't a case that we. We intimidated Arsenal, or bullied them out of it. If you were actually at the game, you would have seen that we actually played them off the park, certainly in the in the opening 60, 60, 70 minutes or so. So we're a different side. We we look to play in a different way. We we can compete. That's that will always be in our makeup. But uh, I think everybody's moved on, and, and maybe you guys should as well. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Mm. Are there any possible advantages to facing Arsenal so soon? I mean, that was a very good morale-boosting win. Do you think that would? Will have any bearing at all on what happens down the Emirates? Well, well, we hope it will. But uh, if you look at our record at the Emirates, it isn't great in recent times. And I include my my own personal record uh, with teams that I've gone there even before Stoke. So uh, for whatever reason, our record <coughs> here at the Britannia is, is excellent. But the Emirates, it's chalk and cheese. So it's an opportunity. Obviously, it's as you say, it's close succession. Uh, we're playing them very quickly after. A really positive performance and results. So hopefully, psych psychologically, that might might help us more than it possibly does Arsenal. So we, we hope that's a benefit. But we need we need to improve our our record. Certainly at the Emirates, we need to uh, um, force them to, to have to work a little bit harder than they have done in the past. And, and maybe with the benefit of having a really good performance against them in recent weeks, and that will help us. Let's hope so. Um. One of the um, advantages, I guess, of, of, of playing Arsenal is the fact that they're going to be quite familiar, aren't they, in, in terms of the way they play, or will they play in a different style? Uh, no, no, I, I think style? I think Arsenal is very consistent in terms of the way he sets his teams up. He'll, he'll change personnel, and 
Um, and on occasions, uh, away from home, he, he's he's gone with two <coughs> sitting midfielders. At, at home, invariably, he goes with just the one, and he has more attacking players in home games. So, apart from that, the actual fundamentals of what he tries to do remain constant. But he's got great talent to, to come in, and by all accounts, his, his injury list is is easing somewhat. So uh, he's getting a few players back as well. So so they'll be very strong, and it'll, it'll be a difficult game for us. We've spoken about the tremendous period over Christmas, eleven points. I think is one of the reasons the the integration of some of your your newer overseas players. I'm I'm thinking of your Bojans, your Nieses, and the other players that have come in now and have really gelled into what you had here already. Yeah. I, I've, I've been here, it's getting on for, for 18 months now and, and it, uh, I wouldn't have done my job if I had some impact in terms of <coughs> their understanding of what I want from them. So yeah, we've certainly seen seen the benefit of the work that, that's been put in. Um, I think a lot of the guys have uh, really stepped up when we, we came under pressure with, with injuries and I think that's uh, really shown the, the character of the group and the and the type of players that I have now, and uh, we've got a little bit more creativity. I think that's acknowledged by most people now, and that's helped us certainly away from home. I think um, having looked at our home record and, and our away record uh, out of the league, I think there's something like the fourth position out of 20 teams uh, with our away away form. So, so that's a positive because last year that was something that uh, we weren't we weren't pleased with, and we've markedly improved our away form so um, once we get the home form aligned to it then we'll be fine What's the highest you can go do you think or is that putting too much pressure on uh, Difficult to say I, I mean we had a great finish to the season last year got to ninth and if we can manage that again then we'll, we'll be delighted a lot of teams obviously uh, have had good starts and they need to maintain it we, we always feel we'll, we'll keep on progressing and picking up points uh, right through the season some teams uh, burn brightly at the beginning and then fade. Um, my teams historically don't do that, so uh, we fully anticipate we'll have a good second half to the season is as good or if not better than the first half. So if that's the case, we'll have a good season. Good, thank you. Mark, you fielded a very strong side against Wrexham. Uh, what did you learn from that experience? Uh, from that uh, Wrexham a good team? Yeah. <laughs> what about Robert Hooth and Stephen Ireland? Well, it's important to give them game time. That, that's what they've been, been lacking. and. Uh, uh, I was pleased that uh, obviously Robert had the first 90 minutes for, for quite some time. Um, so that was a, a positive. Stephen, who's been really unlucky, I think I mentioned last time out, he's uh, arguably at the beginning of the season he was our best performer in pre season, went out of the team through injury and, and found it difficult to get back in. When he did get back in, he got injured again. So for him to come back in um, and just have a, a little cameo at the end of the game, but in fairness, took the game away from Wrexham. So Real, real positive in terms of both of the the guys. So uh, we're pleased. Uh, he's another one that's coming back. Stephen said well as well. Uh, got the 60 minutes that I wanted to put into. So um, it's important now that we start getting players back. We've got Victor Moses obviously back in the group as well. So we're we're looking a little bit stronger than than we were certainly going into the Christmas period. How soon will Victor Moses be ready? Uh, he looks okay. He looks he looks sharp. Whether or not he's ready to start, that's that's something I need to mull over. Uh, I need to see him tomorrow again, see how he shapes up. But um, but he's come back really well, and credit to Chelsea in terms of the the rehab they've given him. Uh, he's bang on track. So uh, uh, we'll be careful. Obviously, uh, we're mindful that prior to his injury, arguably he was our best performer. Thankfully. Uh, when we did lose him, Boyan came in and, and took up the mantle and, uh, and really performed as well. So we, the loss of Victor in terms of our creativity was was lessened to a certain degree. So um, uh, we're mindful of both of them that they they are coming back from injuries. Boyan as well is still one we've got to be careful of because he he's still coming back. Uh, we'll have to see if he's ready for the weekend. But uh, um, for the most part, we, we're really, really pleased with where we are in terms of the the health, health, the state of the group at the moment. You mentioned Mark Nunez, um, he's not going to be. He, he might not be ready for Sunday's anybody else. Oh, he's trained today. He's um, he needs to come through. As long as he hasn't got a reaction, then then he's an option for me. But he uh, he, um, he have an issue with his his groin, so uh, had a slight tear in it, so uh, it settled down. Um, like I said, he trained okay today. Uh, we just have to make sure that he doesn't get a reaction. Can either of those three at 
Chris be on the bench? Uh, yeah, there's a possibility. Uh, they're in the squad, um, but I'll make a decision on the day in terms of who's actually involved. Yeah, Mark, you mentioned Stephen Allen there. Is the key to managing him trying to get such performances out of him on a regular basis? Um, yeah, I mean, Stephen is a good player, and everybody knows my thoughts about Stephen and his ability. He's, he's been unlucky, as I've said. He hasn't been too well, in fairness, this week, so he might miss out at the weekend. Just because through illness he's, he's been trying to train and play through it, but it, it's probably doing more harm than good. He, he may well miss out, but uh, everybody else is likely to be okay. You mentioned he was in and out of the team with injuries, but is, does he sit feature in your plans for the future? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's he's very much part of our squad. He's his quality play. You can you saw against Wrexham the impact that he can have and the quality that he has. I, I thought he came on and. Give us that creativity that on the day that we lacked, and, and that's why he's here to give us that creativity. Mark, I don't know if you saw the remarks from Keith Hackett this week, but call for current referees chief Mike Riley to stand down, claiming that the current set of officials are the worst he has ever seen. There are like 20 uh, major mistakes over just the festive <laughs> period. Do you, uh, oh, just the festive period. Right? Do you, um, yeah, I, I mean, there's been a number of high-profile uh, decisions or non-decisions, if that's the right phrase. And uh, uh, for whatever reason, um, I'm, I'm sure at the end of this season and the beginning of the next season, the referees uh, board will come out and tell everybody that they're doing remarkably well and getting all the key decisions, the percentage of key decisions being made correctly is, is as high as it's ever been. We usually hear that every year, uh, but I think the perception is a little bit different. So uh, I think it, uh, there's a lot of managers, myself included, being a little bit frustrated by some of the decisions, as you would imagine. Um, and it's right across the board, it seems, uh, this year for whatever reason. And uh, uh, that's a little bit of a concern, I would suggest. Just one final question from me. Um, the older man of Simon Corney remarked this week that uh, three Premier League managers contacted him with their support of signing Jed Evans and Bruce. Yeah, Bruce has obviously come out this morning and said he was one of the three. Can I just politely ask whether you were one of the two managers? Or? No, no, I didn't fall in. Thank you folks. Good.